Case number one is from a 29-year-old female. Here we have a sagittal section of a CT scan showing an expansile mass in the rib. The mass is predominantly lytic with little uh, areas of cloudy gray and white, giving us a ground glass appearance. This mass expands and distorts the rib, but it does not destroy the rib. And finally, along the edges, you see this white line, which corresponds to periosteal new bone formation, which is a sclerotic process. So altogether, what this is telling us that this is a slow growing indolent process, meaning that the body has enough time to respond to react to the presence of this mass with new periosteal bone formation that expands the bone but does not destroy the bone. Now tissue was obtained and on the left side you see a low power view of randomly arranged trabeculae of woven bone. The trabeculae of woven bone have an interesting pattern showing uh, some that almost look like alphabet shapes, like this looks like an N. We have over here perhaps a U. This uh, trabeculae woven bone looks like an upside down state of Florida. And maybe we have a, a dinosaur here or even a upside down wiener dog. So this, this pattern is quite unusual uh, of the woven bone and uh, gives us a clue to the diagnosis. Furthermore, the background stroma is quite bland. We can see this even at this low power. Um, and finally, there's a uh, prominent vascular pattern composed of ectatic and staghorn vessels. And on the right, you see this very bland uh, spindle cell stroma uh, that's growing in a storyform pattern. At higher power view, we can see that these bland spindle cells are directly producing this bone. This bone is not being produced by osteoblasts. We have a lack of osteoblastic rimming. So taken together, the histology and the radiology, we have a diagnosis of fibrous dysplasia. 80% of cases of fibrous dysplasia affects a single bone, which is monostatic. However, 20% of cases, multiple bones are affected, a polyostatic variety. And when you see that, think of the syndrome McCune-Albright. Now, common sites include the ribs, the femur, tibia, jaw bones, calvarium, or the humerus. However, um, unusual sites may also occur in fibrous dysplasia, including the small bones of the hands and feet, as well as the spine. Majority of cases are diagnosed in patients younger than age 30. However, 25% of cases are diagnosed in adults. So you have to keep that in mind as well. Fibrous dysplasia is often asymptomatic. However, the bone may fracture. Radiographically, we'll see a ground glass radiolucency that often expands the bone with these well-defined sclerotic margins. Histologically, it's a neoplastic proliferation of woven bone randomly arranged in a curvilinear pattern. Bone arises directly from the stroma, inconspicuous osteoblastic rimming. The stroma is very bland. It looks fibrous. These spindle cells often have a storyform pattern. There may be osteoclasts like giant cells, maybe hemorrhage, maybe a prominent vascular pattern, and they may also have foamy macrophages. Importantly, however, you will not see cytologic atypia. Majority of cases of fibrous dysplasia has activating mutations in the alpha subunit of GNAS. Fibrous dysplasia is negative for MDM2 and CDK4, which uh, is important in the differential diagnosis of low-grade central or well-differentiated intramedullary osteosarcoma. Fibrous dysplasia is also negative for keratin with a differential diagnosis of osteofibrous dysplasia.